Hello, it's Brad Laurie or Blockchain Brad, and today we're speaking about all things sub-social, more, but more importantly, a sub-social network. And to do that, we have none other than the founder right here to explain all things sub-social, and his name is Alec Simon. Alec, thank you very much for making time and your busy schedule to explain all things sub-social to us. Thank you uh, for having me. It's a pleasure to talk to you. You're very welcome, mate. And obviously, English is not your first language, so even more reason why I want to thank it's, you for making so time. Bad. And it's yes, so and, and this interview is entirely free and we have not pre-planned anything. So it's going to really test Alec in terms of, you know, the natural flow of this conversation, but I'm certainly going to make sure that it is a transparent and uh, a free-flowing one as much as I can make make happen. Now, Alec, I wanted to talk to you firstly, let's start with the the, I guess the design, the plan, and the, the claims about subsocial. Now it says here that you're an open platform for decentralized social networks and marketplaces. Now that's not something that is um, unfamiliar to all of us when we consider all the different social uh, dynamics and social platforms that do exist in the world today. But the decentralized aspect is perhaps different, something that many people may not be aware of. So what's the reasoning? What's the crux of sub subsocial? What's it all about? So idea behind subsocial is to uh, build a protocol that would allow people to create their own niche, uh, small, medium, maybe large uh, size communities, subsocial networks, and uh, that could have built in monetization methods and uh, not like a couple of uh, monetization methods that are available on today's Web 2.0, but a broader scope of different methods and plus uh, this should be extendable uh, via smart contracts. Yes, and, and you know, by, by, yeah, by, by default, uh, the architecture is built uh, in, in, in its uh, nature, it's built on, on blockchain. So it's uh, already very different from the, the social networks that you have today. And also, what I would like to add uh, at, the, at the beginning that uh, so social it's not social network, it's social, it's protocol for social networking. And uh, we already have launched uh, blockchain BetaNet uh, last year and TAP that works on top of it. And sometimes people think that subsocial is like uh, just decentralized medium, like one thing, but uh, it's not true. It's just uh, one example uh, reference implementation of how it could be working on our blockchain and as protocol. That makes a lot of sense. So let's clarify this. So I understand what you're saying. So the protocol is one part of it, and then the platform potential is the other. So you could have any operation, any sub-social network that's organized by any group or individual that can operate on that protocol. And that's where the monetization is really exciting because you're enfranchising through the protocol a means for any group to then create their own social network and have that unique component, which is the monetized aspect through the blockchain and through the crypto component. So I really understand now what you mean, that you have those two key parts. Uh, and one we're going to talk about at length because that's going to open up a whole conversation of opportunity that mm -hmm. perhaps people have never seen before when it comes to potential for use of the protocol in how they see fit. But the protocol itself is still very much important for what you're doing. So let's start there. Now, uh, you're based in, I understand, in Europe. Um, you're in an area where certainly uh, technology, I guess a blockchain buzz is happening, a technological hub also in places like Berlin. So let's talk tech for a moment at the protocol, protocol level, and then we'll talk about how that builds in the stack. So do you want to just reference the blockchain? What specifics of the blockchain um, have been built into this protocol and how flexible is it in the future as it builds out? As I mentioned before, uh, our architecture is built uh, on, block, on top of blockchain. So blockchain is a uh, major and... Uh, uh, but, uh, com components that is on, on the fundamental layer, but it's not the single component of a pl uh, platform. So we also have other components that are off chain, like uh, like Postgres database and other databases, and mm -hmm. um, some common web uh, 2.0 services, uh, and even a web app. It's uh, mostly web 2.0 approach, but with some uh, approaches from web 3. Uh, using just signing of transaction, etc. But uh, why do why do we have blockchain and what we have in it all today? <clears throat> so with blockchain, we can have a decentralized uh, consensus on a global state of social public social communication and even encrypted communication. But 
I, I would like to refer it to like a public because uh, even if it's encrypted, it's still in a public space. Mm -hmm. So the idea is that uh, if you look at, uh, let's say, early versions of Instagram and Twitter and uh, Reddit before they had chats, uh, so all of them are public uh, pu publication communication platforms. Mm -hmm. So everything is happening in public uh, and it's visible, it's search engine. Uh, indexable and so on and so forth and this is a uh, quite similar what we are doing at subsocial so anyone uh, could create their own space and subsocial space uh, could represent your either your personal blog or public community or even the project startup any any entity that uh, describes uh, soul or uh, group communication and then uh, owners or members of such spaces could post into these spaces. Others could comment on this as a post and uh, follow spaces they like. So then they will see um, posts from spaces that you follow yes. in your yes. newsfeed. And, and what's exciting also is you're going to embed incentives, rewards, and uh, a way in which uh, the tokens can be exchanged in those settings in those different groups. But Again, that's building on top of the protocol. That's the that's mm -hmm. what's great about the arguably the point where you get to having a seamless interface with the UX UI. You allow for anyone to go and create them. But beyond before you can make those grips, you have to have that really strong, robust protocol itself. So I want to go back to that for a moment. So can you teach us a little bit more about the protocol or the blockchains that you've chosen to work with or that you've built, the code that you've built? Because as I understand it, you're working directly with Polkadot as one of the key blockchains and the blockchain systems and ecosystems. Um, and obviously, you know, I'd imagine you're pretty flexible with that. But I wanted to touch on this to really just give confidence to the listener that you are starting with some of the best technologically uh, mm -hmm. based blockchain architectures so that you have that ability to have, you know, strong use, uh, user base and strong uptake of uh, experimentation by these groups. That protocol really the quality of that's really going to matter sure so we're building on a blockchain framework called substrate that is developed by parity technologies while working mm -hmm. on uh, creating polka dot and kusama so as uh, some of you or all of you already know polka dot and kusama they both built on substrate blockchain framework and uh, company and community behind polka and kusama they promoting to others, so please uh, take our substrate framework and build your blockchains. And then uh, if you want, they could be independent blockchains or you can connect via slot to Kusama and Polkadot to share the uh, security of the blockchain behind blockchains because it's very important to proof of stake systems. Mm -hmm. And we're also building on substrate. And one of the uh, reasons why we're doing this is that with substrate, you can have a great blockchain. This is very important because uh, before like a couple of years ago, when you want to, when you need to upgrade your blockchain logic, uh, how your transactions processed, what the kind of new transactions you want, you need to orchestrate fork, hard forks. And this is crazy. It's very hard and unexpected results can be uh, after all this stuff. And uh, blockchains didn't evolve very fast and often because of uh, this complexity. So at parity, they, uh, designed and implemented such a uh, possibility that uh, your blockchain is built on, on substrate could be upgraded and uh, any time any amount of time <laughs> number of times and um, this means that uh, you can we can afford ourselves uh, faster iterations uh, so it could be more similar to like normal startups from uh, web 2.0 era when you yeah. have sprints and iterations like every week every month etc so this is why we chosen substrate plus it's uh, of course uh, fast and you can, we can have uh, high transactions throughput and of, of course another reason is that uh, we can be connected to Kusama and or Polkadot and this means that uh, even behind besides its uh, security shared security feature we also will be connected to the other blockchains that are called parachains in Polkadot and Kusama and we can have direct communications with them like for example you had guys from Plasm recently and let's say we could uh, call smart contracts from Plasm on subsocial so 
content creators uh, could monetize uh, their content activities in a different way. They, they can think and uh, design using smart contracts. So in this way, they will extend what we already have out of the box. Wow. And, you know, I, I say wow, and I don't want to do it in the FOMO sense, but I think that your explanation, this is quite impressive because we've been able to articulate that the, the technological reasons for this are so that you can have a faster, more seamless experience for the user fundamentally. So did you go through a rigorous process of trying to work out for you as a team, which would be the optimal blockchain system to work with? Because there are several available. And I'm asking that in the sense of also hopefully you bridging into other but um, layer one technologies or layer one blockchains as well in the future, should that be um, of value to you? But clearly there was something about Polkadot because of all that, uh, I guess, cross blockchain and cross parachain potential that's going to open up so much because they function as layer ones. And on top of that, you have all the access to parity in the substrate. So it, it was a pretty smart move, I would imagine. But how, what was the nature for you? How did, you come up, how did that come about to decide to really sink your teeth into this uh, to build out your own project. Yeah, so in 2017, I started writing smart contracts on Ethereum and uh, shortly I found limitations of it uh, in, in uh, gas fee and uh, slow trans transaction throughput and uh, scalability and all, the, all these problems that we still have, like <laughs> uh, four years later, we still have all these problems and sometimes people find the solutions like gas station and uh, some doing more of chain logic, but still it's uh, it's very slow and, and, and expensive. During this DeFi craziness, like uh, $80 for transactions. Mm. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, it's a good point. Yeah. And, and it's great that you mentioned Plasm because as you know, they've built in some scalability um, uh, mm -hmm. technology into their system rather than added on from other external parties. And, and also with their messaging, with their cross uh, compatibil compatibility and cross chain, that's really changing the game. And you're already having a dialogue with Plasm, which means that I feel more confident that, you know, you're really you're making the best of the other parachains that exist there or potential parachains, I should say. Yeah. And you, you asked about the uh, reason behind choosing Substrate and Polkadot. And uh, so I, I understood in, in some, uh, uh, in 2018 that uh, if you want some world-class product, uh, like um, even even the website that uh, can handle uh, process uh, millions of users per month, uh, it will not fly on, on Ethereum. Uh, it could it could if you build an off-chain a lot using, for example, the graph or something like that, but it will be not an uh, interactive experience. It will be more like a read read on the experience and, and uh, subquery is working on some of that as well i understand the polka dots yes right? yes there are several projects in substrate that working on uh, mm. graph like exp experience for developers and uh, for example currently we're using uh high what, what's the name of it uh, so it's also a graphql uh, framework uh, but from another team joystream.org yeah, mm -hmm. so they created this during uh, Hakusama last year. So, for example, right now we're finishing the feature uh, that will allow you to scroll endlessly through uh, latest posts, through popular posts this day, this week, all time, and then similar about spaces like last created spaces, most followed spaces, mm -hmm. uh, spaces with most posts, etc. So, this will uh, drastically improve user experience. But uh, what I wanted to say about uh, choosing Substrate and, and Polkadot is that uh, at that time, like a couple of years ago, I, I totally understood that uh, we need this uh, DAP specific blockchain. So I, I, I remember I read this term from guys uh, from Cosmos and they ha had this narrative like uh, Tender Mint and Cosmos SDK is, uh, is your thing to build DAP specific blockchains. And I thought, okay, this is what I need. Uh, what I need. Mm -hmm. Because uh, if you want to have a solid product, you cannot build it in a sandbox of the whole world. Like Ethereum is a sandbox for the whole world. The whole world competes for the throughput, for the speed, for the gas. The and this nation. doesn't, yeah, it doesn't make sense at all. Like uh, it, it sounds, again, it's, you, you can think it's in a, in a good way, but it's, it's like sandbox to try some ideas. And uh, if you remember a lot of projects created during 2017, 18, that were not scam, 
they still continue today building on other blockchains that are more scalable again like a lot of them moving to polkadot substrate some of them moving to solana mm. etc uh, and, and to cosmos and, and we see that also alec in the sense that through technological innovation and iteration that's always often a given a bit like you know when we see the first car and then we move on to new models it's like that and out of respect for ethereum obviously they're doing the best they can to try and build solutions on, on top in their tech stack um they're trying to onboard our, our, our off-chain solutions as well so you know respectfully they were the, one of the first movers with smart contracts certainly that was the case but let's get back to you i really appreciate the transparency and the honesty to be honest because at the end of the day, you fundamentally want that user to have the best experience possible without knowing about the blockchain. That's what I'm thinking. And so for you, with the skill sets you have and all your team, you have to really make sure you hit the nail on the head when it comes to the best choices, um, the best alliances technologically to make. And it sounds like you've done that. So uh, congratulations on making sure that you, you know, you've aligned in the right way there. Now let's go back and let's talk about specifically what you're doing with Subsocial now that we understand you've chosen the, you know, arguably the correct path technologically. Now it says that you're a set of substrate palettes with, with web UI allowing anyone to create a censorship, a censorship resistant social network. And that's what you were saying before. It's about afford, that technology affording this capacity to build something cool, something revolutionary and with that token. So let's talk about that, what it could actually, what it is, what it could mean for the entire world in terms of this new element of tokenization in a sub-social context. Yeah, so are you asking about uh, how we're going to use token or you asking some, well, some I th- I, well, I want you to tell me both because the token's part of what can be is going to be done with the sub-social networks. You know, by what you can do on this protocol, let's assume that I'm a group. Let's assume you're a group. What can we do now with this protocol in terms of really making doing something that's different because I assume the token's part of what can be done that's totally different to what's been done in the past. Yeah, so uh, before this year, we have been very focused on uh, implementing quite uh, generic and common functionality across the major popular social networks. And uh, as I mentioned before, it includes uh, creating following spaces, posting, commenting, upvoting, um, seeing notifications, all this stuff. Like to, to People that are uh, using Facebook and YouTube, this could sound like, uh, okay, so you did this in like two weeks and then what? <laughs> no, <laughs> it was much more complex because of blockchain. So yeah, it took quite, a, quite some time. And what I want to say is that uh, from the day one, we already have native token in our system. And uh, this year we are m- much more uh, focused on uh, working on monetization methods that will be shipped out of the box with the protocol and they will be available to any, everybody who is creating space and post on, on, on the platform. So I would like to explain the vision on uh, what we are trying to build. I would love to hear that. We will look. Yes, and the reason I want to talk to you the most yeah, is that- so we, uh, as a, as a, The basic uh, use case for token is obviously to pay for transactions, but uh, on social net- networks, people don't want to pay a, 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 thing, <laughs> a dime for anything. Mm-hmm. They just want to click, to upload gigabytes for free, and this is so uh, used to for people, so they don't even think that somebody should pay for it. Like uh, if you upload, if millions and billions of people uploading uh, one even one megabyte of data every day it's a huge cost for, for the company and uh, uh, what i'm trying to say is that uh, people used to not pay on social networks at all because uh, today social networks have been in this way that uh, they try to hook us into the product and uh, mm. then we became a product so they feed us the advertisement and i yeah but uh, on blockchain blockchain is different because uh, you should pay for every action because if at least even one action even like even one like uh, action like upvote is free even if upvote is free let's say like upvote is something super super simple action right for normal people even if you make upvote is free mm. uh, attacker can create an endless loop that will send transactions endlessly and will DDoS your blockchain like in, in no matter of time and uh, so this is one uh, kind of attack 
So in blockchain, everything should cost, but there are different interesting approaches that we're going to apply is, so we could get free transactions if you have this number of tokens. So you could think about tokens, not just a, a value transfer, uh, like money, but uh, you can think of it as a license or something that allows you to use resources of blockchain because blockchain is a resource and it's quite expensive resource. Mm. So for example, even in case of substrate, uh, such as it's scalable and fast and so on, uh, you cannot have like uh, billions of users on, on the same blockchain. You should think about shard and scale and, uh, and tree-like structure of your system. But still, with Substrate, you could have something like millions of users, uh, roughly calculated. Uh, and uh, so it means that your blockchain can process millions of users. Then you just take your unstake tokens, for example, and divide uh, by number of people that could use, and then you can get some rough understanding how much tokens uh, one user should have to have, let's say, like uh, five to 10 transactions per day. And plus you can apply some uh, improvements and uh, optimizations uh, similar to how internet providers uh, split the uh, traffic uh, between different uh, users, even in the same build, in the same co corporation. Etc. So it's much like uh, about uh, dealing with uh, internet traffic uh, and rate limiting from internet providers. So we are going to um, implement something like that in right. our case as well. And, and you know, it's interesting because everything you said sounds like it's the, I guess, the beginning phase of this as well. And no doubt, the technology, the, iter the iterating, will help build this capacity out. Um, in future years. And this is just the beginning already. You can cater for millions, which is going to be very important. But let, let's go back to, I guess, the vision you were talking about because you want to have those groups. And we've already seen the emergence of different groups that do exist in social media now. Um, and the key difference will be decentralised. But the other part will be how these, these groups can autonomously decide how to tokenize as well. Uh, I think mm -hmm. that's another game changer. So do you want to talk about that? And the reason I want to talk about it is because in the literature, people can easily assume that you're a decentralised Reddit or a medium. You're actually not. You're your own system, your own design, but we can use these to like and, and understand. So do you want mm -hmm. to touch on all of this more so we really understand exactly what you are and what it's going to be like to engage and open up um, conversations through these unique networks that we can create or take part in? Yeah, so the, the major difference from existing uh, social networks uh, and even platforms that allow you to create uh, on top of your, your social network or community, like there are circle or so, a tribe or so, is that uh, by default we already have built-in token. And in this way, we're more similar to Steemit actually, mm -hmm. because in Steemit uh, you have again native token and a couple other tokens that represent your power and stable coin. <clears throat> and uh, um, so they have inflation and from inflation they can distribute the reward to the most uh, upvoted post during the period. So in this way, we're quite similar to it, uh, but uh, we're looking further. And uh, what I mean by this is that uh, we want to allow every space optionally and to create their own uh, space token. So think about the space token as uh, there are such terms uh, popular today called uh, social token or brand token or personal token. So in our case, it's a social token because it's token for it's it's a space token because it's token for space. And uh, how we see it is that uh, space owners or community could uh, by by using their own token could decide uh, how to define membership, uh, how many tokens a member should have for how long time. Uh, how to use the token for rewards, and I even foresee uh, they are they creating different contests and uh, reward schemas, formulas uh, based on smart contracts. So it's, what is uh, not possible on Medium and Reddit at all, and even it's not possible on Steaming because they don't have support for smart contracts uh, and they are isolated blockchain. So like a lot of time. At people asking, uh, so you like create a Steemit, but for Polkadot, and at first, like I say, yeah, some some sort of sort of, but uh, it's just uh, from the one at first glance, and then uh, such as a building on a substrate, we're much more flexible because there are a lot of modules and extendable frameworks. So mm. we 
can have smart contracts and we're definitely going to have that support for it. So people can use them to extend what we're providing, like with Ethereum. So Ethereum didn't have this uh, uh, dApps that we have today, like Uniswap, SushiSwap, Aave, et cetera, et cetera. And they could exist like in 2017 already if people created because of smart contracts. Smart contracts ex existed back then and today. And the same I see, and uh, I'm very, very interested to see it for social networking because it's uh, for me, it's like obvious uh, path to evolve uh, because uh, we, what, what is uh, representation of interactions of people on internet? It's uh, communication, it's public communications and direct communication. And what is representation of uh, money in, in the internet? It's blockchains, it's uh, Ethereum, Bitcoin, uh, polka dots and, and so on mm. so why just to not make them friends together and exactly. why not to use the best well, of both worlds well that's like why you, that's why you engage with layer zero that's what polka dot is it's about bridging technologically not just you know with the narrative literally they're trying to build this bridge across to these different and as you know the parachains are part of the layer one solutions that are bridging as well hence you're working in plasm so all of these things are so technologically exciting and then we see that uh, i guess the the high demand for this kind of thing because we've seen the problems with facebook we've experienced them we know about the problems with the alg algo or the algorithm uh, we know about the advertising there's so many centralized problems we see and that's been brought to the fore with all this media attention you could redress literally a lot of these problems through this model as well as having new solutions and more importantly one of the things you said that you do differentiate very strongly to all of them is you have that uh, series of that that networks capacity and the smart contracts so there are first mover aspects built into subsocial that haven't ever been done before in the world. Yeah, so I would like to ex expand your uh, answer about Facebook and algorithm on this centralized stuff. So from one side, from one point, uh, I truly respect uh, what Facebook, uh, Twitter, all, all the platforms are made today by today. So it's amazing stuff. It's a very great technology. But uh, I think one of the biggest problems of it, or at least as, as we can see it today, so like five years, 10 years ago, it was not a problem maybe. But today we see that we can do something differently. And why should we still continue to use that vision of 10 years uh, old of Facebooks and Twitters and so on, uh, when we can have, <clears throat> when we can go uh, the path that is uh, more similar to uh, DeFi with uh, mm. all this, uh, and un 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 unleashed uh, creativity. And uh, what I'm going to say is that, again, uh, Facebook is a great product. It's super cool technology and uh, very smart people created it, like uh, hundreds of people at uh, Instagram, thousands at Facebook, etc. cetera. Uh, but what is a thing is that uh, Facebook and even Instagram, they're still one company. And one company cannot have several, like uh, tens, hundreds of visions at the same time. They should have one vision and all the different teams, even if they are sort of independent working on sub products, they should be aligned with one big vision of a corporation. Mm -hmm. And why it's uh, like a problem? Because we have a lot of people in the world, like uh, 7 billion of people, or how many today? And why you should think? Why, why do we think that uh, for all seven billion people there could be only one vision of doing things you know, on social networking? Okay, you can say, yeah, there is Twitter, and some people even say there is Instagram. But <laughs> again, Instagram, Facebook, WhatsApp, it's one company. Mm -hmm. And uh, okay, so we have Facebook, we have Twitter, Reddit, YouTube, uh, and it's like Medium, Quora, like you can count them on, on 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 two hands, right? So in yes. two hands. Like for 7 billion people have only several uh, different uh, approaches. And again, if you look at Facebook and Twitter, they are super similar. So even Reddit is more different from them, but Facebook, mm. Twitter, quite similar. Yes, and they are mostly different. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I just want to clarify that uh, centralization, in, it doesn't, it's not a uh, problem on its own. Uh, what I wanted to, to, to say, and explain to people is that centralization on a huge level is a problem because you cannot align with all 7 billion peoples, people. 
for example, uh, something could be fine in one country and wrong in another country. But mm. Facebook as uh, one entity, one corporation. I, I remember I listened to one podcast on uh, uh, free speech and, and similar stuff. And they said that uh, some symbols, I, I wouldn't mention which one, uh, could not be uh, could not be fine in one country, but could be fine in another country. And uh, mm. the answer from Facebook is that just to not not all of such symbols, controversial symbols at all, not to make any uh, pro- problems and issues in any of countries, because this should be aligned with. Uh, most of the countries that are great and right and, and it and, also and opens up for dem- democracy for a true democratic scenario you do need a degree of decentralization but even more so you need an opportunity for people to establish their own communities their own groups and that's truly why i want to talk to you because you're literally amazing uh, enabling that you're enfranchising that technologically so and you're even going to make sure there's there's means for rewards there's means for incentivization and means for uh, i guess tokenomics built in by design by those groups Mm -hmm. so that's quite revolutionary and then adding on those smart contract layers so i really wanted to keep touching on that because this is a world first in in what you're doing and i think you really do understate it in your tone and in your manner and i appreciate that but i think that people need to know more about the reality that what you're doing and the magnitude of this and also, are the competitors doing anything like this remotely where the, the technology is matched? So thus, they would need to be using something like Polkadot. And would they be also using smart contracts in the same way? I doubt it, but I was wondering, are there any other competitors to Subsocial? Yeah, so how, how we see it is that um, yeah, what is Facebook and, and Twitter best for is that they have this uh, networks effects. But their network's effects is closed. They are not sharing it with anybody. And you can think like, yeah, they're sharing it via API. But if you try to create a competitor, even like uh, 10 times smaller, but still uh, recognizable, uh, they will shut down access to you because you will be trying to compete with them using their API data. They don't like that at all. Mm-hmm. They want to control access to the safe feed. So they want people use... Uh, feed from their product because only in this case they make money from advertisement and how i see it uh, it's a difference that uh, with the help of blockchain we could have shared networks effects so and, and from the other side uh, people could build their sub communities uh, separate communities that are independent that are customizable in any possible way running on their domain nobody can say anything bad about that uh, or restriction from them like with uh, ethereum and dubs you cannot uh, your new soap cannot say anything to social soap even if they don't like and they they don't like <laughs> i see mm. from this and but but still they can develop on their own and and that's it and imagine if uh, ethereum is facebook they could say like you swap uh, social soap please shut down because you soap are not happy but they can't. And this is uh, quite something similar that uh, we're looking into. Like uh, mm-hmm. if there is one uh, community that is not happy about another community, uh, they cannot still do so much except uh, ban their content on, on their side, from, so on site A from site B. And, and it's totally fine. It's like somebody go, uh, came to your home and say that you uh, bad guy, I, I, he, he wants to, I don't know, uh, kill you or something. So why you should not be happy? You should be happy. Oh, you should not be not happy. Oh my God. No, I know you what should you mean. Be not, you should yeah. be not happy, right? And, and, and so you, know you should call ex- police and so on. And, so and what's ex- moderation. Yeah, and what's exciting is clearly you're pro-democracy, pro-innovation, and also trying to change the status quo in terms of how ta- technology can go back towards, you know, a truly fairer system where we do afford options and choice. And what's interesting is that uh, ideally people would have thought initially perhaps that uh, things like Facebook and Twitter opened up, you know, the choice of people. But in fact, when you look look deeper into these systems, often they do lead into um, decisions by central parties, whether that be from, you know, we've seen recently um, in months ago where the decision was made to pull some people from Twitter, some very influential people in the world. That again is a major decision that they had to make. This would not be possible in your system and this is what's exciting about democracy. You're literally changing you know, some of these dynamics. So I wanted to ask you about regulation in the context of uh, the past. When we see Facebook trying, we saw them with um, Libra. Now it's become DM. Um, that is supposed to be some sort of monetary unit, as I understand, or some sort of 
uh, uh, unit of account for their internal model. Now, how would that differ to you in terms of your token? Because you would clearly have some sort of value proposition and digital asset for your entire platform for every group to relate back to. So can you discuss your token design in, the, in, in how we would use this and what it would be classified as? Would it be a utility? What would it be? And how, again, how would we can come engage with that token? Yeah, today token is uh, truly utility because uh, it's not even uh, transferable between accounts. Uh, currently only we distribute token uh, based on uh, people's requests on our token for set. So for example, if you want to start using platform, uh, you need to do this sm smooth and uh, easy registration. So you just specify your account address and blockchain and email address, and then you receive a confirmation link. So you follow confirmation link. If it's confirmed, you receive a small number of tokens that you can use uh, for using the platform. So to create in posts and follows and everything like that. And then we are going to improve that. So people that confirm the mail, they will have uh, several transactions for free per day, something like that. So then uh, utility of token will be that people need to consider should be considering it as a license to access the uh, uh, functionality of blockchain, as I mentioned before, with uh, internet providers. So in this way, you, you sort of buying a license or access uh, to the resources, so to the blockchain as a resource, to some par portion of it. And uh, yeah, so you can think of token as a license and ac token access control token. And then uh, token will, uh, will be used uh, when it became tra uh, transferable and when we launch mainnet. So then it could be used for incentivizations, for example, mm -hmm. such as we're working on tips and donations right now, mm -hmm. and then also looking at other monetization features. People could use token as, uh, again, as with Ether and Bitcoin to, to pay for something to uh, encourage other people, incentivize, etc. And then uh, utility of token is uh, to be uh, liquidity uh, mm -hmm. in, when, when creating a new token for, for space. So when you're creating a new token for a new space, it should be backed by something that already has value. And this uh, something could be our native token. Wow, so in, that's, in, in case, that's big. Because yeah, yeah, in case, because that's uh -huh. huge because that incentivizes almost like a staking model, but for liquidity it means you've got to put up that collateral, that liquidity uh, in order to make your token operate well. So that's another way to add value definitely to your native token. Yeah, so imagine uh, you want to create a space. Uh, in, in, in our case, uh, you can define, you can even think about space as a, some variation of DAO, decentralized autonomous organization, because we already have such features like access control layer, access control layers that includes uh, roles uh, and permissions uh, so you can define who can post uh, is it possible to comment or not is it possible to share what so we have like uh, a, a lot of different permissions so you can set up even individually per space so and and even more uh, the more features we add uh, the more parameters will be possible to change uh, using uh, let's say native space token so it, it will be uh, in, members will be incentivized to have the tokens in the same way as they are in, in, interested to have a governance token of uh, DeFi projects because they want they could be used to uh, participate in uh, voting. voting on proposals mm -hmm. and uh, making changes and uh, expressing their interest or not interest about something. So totally the same. And for, this is one of the things that we want to deliver is uh, another type of post that is poll. So polls will be native. And the first poll type of posts, uh, po first type of polls uh, will be using our to native token. But then when we introduce uh, multi-currency, so any space could have its own token, uh, this, uh, their own token could be used uh, in polls. So when you will be, create, let's say you create a, a space uh, bread, uh, bread uh, blockchain, right? Mm. And then you issue a token that could have this, even the same name. So you just inherit the name of uh, space and, and, and avatar. So you don't even need to think about name and avatar. So your space is your coin, is your token, the same name and avatar, etc. 
And uh, what is interesting then, uh, if you create a poll, for example, what projects should they talk next? Uh, let's say uh, follow equilibrium uh, and uh, robonomics. Mm -hmm. And then people on the source who have uh, membership with your tokens, or for example, you can sp say that uh, if a person has at least 50 tokens or if person um, hodl tokens uh, for the last uh, two months. So again, look, what I'm trying to say is that uh, in, in, in the future, I see that uh, there should be used smart contracts. So this will bring the maximum flexibility. So not you, you will not be limited to what we provide but you can define your own things. And maybe even some, some creators, uh, let's say more artists, they are more about creating digital uh, arts and they're not, uh, not programmers, they're not so mm. uh, in, in the programming, others could create. And maybe we could see sort of like a collection of uh, yes. interesting, uh, good uh, algorithms and, and formulas that you could uh, plug and play into your contest, into your uh, poll, poll, et cetera. And that's all the more reason why uh, using the substrate is so relevant here. You gave some examples of others that are on that because you can then interconnect, interoperate, because again, that uh, smart contract center is going to be available to each of these different parachains or each of these different substrate technologies, and then even brought, bridge out into other uh, technologies from there. So the, the potential is, seem, uh, you know, is infinite, really, what mm -hmm. can be done. But I think, again, I wanted to ask you more about the regulatory side because I want to better understand, will this, because there's so many different facets to your utility, you've, you've articulated those, it's a bit like those from, I guess, Akala or Plasm. I mean, there's so many different facets to their utilities as well. Um, and they go by the book, imagining you're going down the same route. Are you confident that each of the different jurisdictions around the world are going to acknowledge you as a tried and tested utility token so that you can apply this for decades and, and even beyond that, because I really want to see this thrive. Um, this is a great idea and this is great technology and you're already past the idea well and truly, but how do you get the top down, those entities that have been so resistant to Facebook, you know, doing Libra and DM, how do you change that, that uh, to an accepting and open framework where they collaborate and work with you? Yeah, I cannot comment uh, too much on regulation because I'm not a legal uh, person, but um, what I what I think is that um, I remember there were a lot of discussions around uh, Facebook's Libra and Telegram's uh, tone. Uh, the, yeah, the coin was called Gram Gram. So the the final thoughts on why they failed and why they had a lot of uh, uh, problems from government is that. Uh, they already has uh, huge audiences. Like Facebook has a uh, few billion of uh, monthly active users. And Telegram had recently reported how many? Like uh, 800 million or something, or 500 okay. million active, active users. So, um, so from what I, what, I, what I see, understand is that uh, government can see here a problem is that Facebook and, and, and Telegram they could be considered as a country size. So it's like vir they are mm. virtual countries. And uh, if they're virtual countries, as they introduce uh, a new token and, and even more like a cryptocurrency that is working on their platform, they are immediately like in, in day one, in day two, they became a competitor to US dollar That's in true. this way. Potentially, this, that was the concern. Yeah, so, yeah this was like a super fast change and uh, such as they, they didn't have a chance to introduce it slowly, like under the radar, you know, like with Bitcoin. Bitcoin was under radar. So it was mm. uh, spreading slowly, day by day, month by month. And like a couple of years later, when we have uh, already millions of people, not hundreds of millions, but we still have millions of people that actively using Bitcoin. And you can think, remember, like uh, recently MetaMask says they have one million active users oh my god this is so huge big deal for for metamask for ethereum it's like uh, one it's almost like billion of people if using uh, facebook the same size but for a cryptocurrency but this is under radar for 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 us government for, for dollars definitely, definitely under the radar and also as you'd appreciate that 
Bitcoin had a very different premise in that it was uh, initially a cypherpunk movement, had a sort of a, a intention to be some sort of global decentralized monetary asset of some kind, and then it morphed, you know, into another angle, and that was the SOV, the store of value. So now you see a lot of people trying to really use that as some sort of um, means of storing uh, and, and value and securing that value for the long term, which is a really interesting play um, that's emerged. Um, but when it comes to something like you or something like Facebook, there was a very different design here because Facebook already had its own business entity. It had already had a huge platform and, and then commerce was the premise. So in your situation, commerce could also be, but decentralized commerce you know, and that's where those terms before that we were talking about with no, um, you not having an algorithmic dictatorship, you not having algorithm, algorithmic censorship. That's the complete opposite and converse to the narratives that have played out through Facebook's change, uh, through the agenda that's emerged. So I really think that in, in many respects, you're so far removed from anything that Bitcoin's been done. And actually you're challenging the, the nature, very nature of what you know, Facebook is even trying to do right now with their experiment, experimentations with blockchain. So do you think that they're paying attention to you with your network system, your plural approach, with your blockchains approach because of all the parachains and all the interoperability that's gonna be afforded for your own potential parachain uh, or certainly working on the, paras, on the substrate at least. I just see that so many people are going to be, find you appealing. I certainly do. When if I had a choice between the blockchain solution that Facebook provided in you, I know which one I would choose. I choose the one that gives me more freedom, gives me more autonomy, gives me more choice. Yeah, I think we don't exist uh, to <laughs> Facebooks and Twitter. We don't exist. And uh, it's, a, it's a good thing, actually, a again, because of this uh, under radar, et cetera. So we can evolve uh, uh, more uh, with, 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 without uh, additional... Uh, I see. So do you, want, you know? do you want to be under the radar? Is that what you're saying, Alec? Uh, I think yes. I think yes, because uh, even under the radar, you could have hundreds of thousands of people and millions of people using it, like with MetaMask. Uh, and uh, from from Facebook and Twitter and Google, do you remember the Google had this uh, Google Plus? And I don't remember exactly how many users right. there were like, but there, there was something like, maybe 50 million active users. And for Google, it's nothing. It was uh, a so they're not uh, considering, yeah, is they not considering something uh, that has millions of users? I mean, uh, tens of millions of users. They, they interested in something that has hundreds of millions of users, billions of users because of their uh, um, size. And uh, so they could make like small money on every user, but uh, if they have billions of users, this is uh, millions, hundreds of millions of dollars. And so for them, Google Plus was not a thing. But for example, in our case, if we could get even uh, a part of size of uh, Google Plus, like uh, let's say uh, 1 million of active users, and these users are empowered with uh, cryptocurrency and all this um, smart contact things and uh, having NFT experience and social tokens, I think that will be crazy. And uh, again, you could think, compare it to the sa same level level of uh, magnitude as uh, if you multiply it by 1000 uh, and compare with Facebook. So for, mm -hmm. for crypto, million of users is much more important and powerful than 1 billion of uh, passive users on Facebook that are just scrolling, liking and reading and mm -hmm. Facebook is feeding to them. Yeah, yeah, it's a good point. Um, I want to pull it back again to you because we're getting a little bit off track with all these different discussions, even though they're very valid because I want to understand better your roadmap and the features that you've built in. Because now that I've heard you say you'd like to be a bit off the radar, it makes you a bit of a heretic. You're even more appealing to all of us in crypto now that you've said that. But we still also want you to emerge and be taken seriously when you do, you really showcase what you can do because you're also utilizing technology that is very serious and very high quality. So your features, things like, for example, IPFS integrations, decentralized communities, your server side rendering, um, your personalized feeds and not notifications built in, transparent reputation design and full text search. Now, you can, or anyone listening to this, you can go and find out more about them, but they are key features that you've built in. But I guess I just wanted to have more confidence from you that you're ready. So where are you positioned in the roadmap right now? If we were to an analyze code, for example, look at the UX UI, 
everything in that sense. How, where are you along in the planning to eventually get to that main net position? Yeah, it's a very good question. And um, we, we received uh, two gr technical grants from the TIF Foundation and we're part of Substate Builders Program. And from time to time, we have calls with uh, guys from Parity uh, during this uh, Substate Builders Program that, that are part of Substate Builders Program. And just recently, we had this conversation about uh, our second uh, our next milestone in terms of subscribe builders program so what should be implemented what should we achieve uh, before we came in a minute and uh, the things are that um, we want to help we want to deliver a couple of monetization methods like uh, tips and uh, nfts and space tokens for example mm -hmm. like i consider these three items very appealing and they will be they, they will allow people to, to, to do uh, composable and, and, and quite complex uh, systems and monetizations. And then on top of that, uh, we also want to have free transactions. Uh, so it will be less friction for, mm -hmm. for people to use a product. And uh, on top of that, we need to have a code audit. Uh, yeah, because uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's uh, very important to have code audit before mainnet. So to summarize uh, how I see what should be shipped uh, before we became in mainnet is that uh, several monetization features, feel, uh, feel less transactions and code audit. This is a okay. very minimum. Maybe and something along the lines like uh, UX improvements, I don't know, maybe starting some mobile uh, implementation. Yeah, and it sounds like there'll be a few other things added to the list, but what it also sounds like is that the bedrock is done. So, you know, you code, is obviously open source, I would imagine. Um, you've been mm -hmm. spending years on this, not months. So based on what you said, I would imagine that this is going to happen this year. Sometime mainnet like, is, is planned sooner rather than later. So do you want to give us a little bit more direction or understanding without trying to create any sort of sense of FOMO and hype, but give us some real expectations, a real understanding of what you're actually doing and are you hitting all the benchmarks and the milestones as you move forward? Yeah, so I don't like to provide uh, estimates in, in, in programming because programming is very unexpected. Mm -hmm. And for example, recently we have been moving from substrate version two to substrate version three. And we spend like a lot of time, uh, several days, maybe one week, fixing different problems because we wanted to jump over some uh, versions in the middle. So looks like we, we cannot jump over them so we just need to be more iterative but anyways what i want to say is that uh, it's very hard to do some predictions and then uh, some people could stick to these predictions and refer to yeah you promised this and that and that time mm. but like in if in very rough estimates uh, i could think about something like i don't know half a year something like mm -hmm. this so it's yeah. not days it's not years it's something within uh, one year and uh, in best case, maybe, I mean, closer to the autumn or something like that. I and, you know, know, you know and, and obviously autumn is different for everyone around the world, depending on who's listening. But we do like to hear that, you know, you're making that progress because especially in the way in which the market's moving, we want to also see you get traction, you know, and in a bear market, that's going to be a lot harder to do. But, in, but that's the next question is, how have you survived this long, Alec, in your team in terms of runway? Have you bootstrapped this with your team? Talk, talk us through the money aspect of this to keep going. Are you raising capital now? What's happening mm. in order to continue this process through so that you don't have to worry about the funds? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, so far uh, we have received uh, two, two technical grants from the foundation and plus uh, I put my savings into, uh, sp into sponsoring development of all this. So you really believe in and it to, plus to really we have back quite, it personally? Of course. <laughs> of course, I'm the first person who believes in this. <laughs> but I mean, I mean not so many people. Money. Of course, <laughs> yeah. Mm. Uh, my own money, yeah, true. So it's like, it's a mix of uh, money from grants. Uh, and at that time, grants was not big. Clearly, what, what you, from what you've said is that you've bootstrapped this initially with your own capital. Then uh, mm. you had two very important grants as well. But now you're at a point where perhaps you know, more, a top-up is needed. You, you, you come across as someone who is clearly not going to go after a lot of money. 
you know, um, in the sense that you're not going after huge raises of capital. You want to, you're keeping this very lean. That's the sense I'm getting. So do you want to touch on, are you going down a VC route? Are you going down um, a fairer launch route? I mean, what are the ways in which you're possibly going to raise capital um, and what kinds of amounts are you wanting to do and how far will that take you through? Yeah, so we're looking more into VC. Uh, I'm not very big fan of uh, fair lunch because, uh, um, yeah, I even, I even heard the similar thoughts from, um, yeah, recently I listened to one podcast. I don't remember who was on that podcast. It, maybe it was a Zero Knowledge podcast. And they have been discussing uh, this. Ah, it was Dark. Drachma, Dharma, I don't remember. Mm, okay. And and they were discussing discussing uh, social swap versus Uniswap and all this fair lunch and token and all this stuff. And uh, the thing is that <clears throat> this fair for, for whom? Fair for whales. So if you if you whale, you will get a, a huge amount of tokens. If you if you uh, simple guy, you will get small amount of tokens, number of tokens. Well, it depends so on how they're for done. For whom it's fair? Well, it depends on how they're run. Yeah, That's it, the it could depend. Because they do vary greatly. But, but it could. But I'd love to hear you how you're approaching. But it again, you again, can you, can, you can you can think of you can think on uh, Uniswap. So, for example, in, in Uniswap, they didn't do this based on amounts. Uh, they did this uh, based on number of transactions and accounts. And again, how fair is that? So, do you know that in Ethereum you could generate like endless number of accounts? And maybe in, in beer uh, time when it was not so hot and you could have uh, cheaper transactions, you could have, let's say, hundreds of accounts, maybe thousands. And, and by making a couple of small transactions super cheap uh, on these accounts, and then you will be you, you will incentivized with uh, 1,000 uh, equivalent in, in uni. How far? How fair is that? This is a yeah. super uh, and, open and question. Fair, exactly. And that's why I say fairer, because there is no such thing as a fair launch that just doesn't exist no. but the thing is that in your situation because you're relatively in stealth in terms of the work you've been doing you want to be that slow burn you want to you don't want to come out and just uh surprise the regulate the regulators and the powers that be uh, no. i really respect that approach but in doing so um you also have to make sure that you uh, have that long-term support so you can be viable and you can sustain all of the work you're building. So you mentioned that you you alluded to the point of perhaps having some key capital injections from certain parties. So how do you decide that? Because in the past, some capital entrants or capital supporters have dumped the token when they can. As soon as that tranche happens, boom, they'll dump it. Some don't do that. Some hold the token and value that for the utility that emerges. How do you decide on who will support you? And what kind of due diligence do you do on them to make sure it's not just about money? Yeah, it's a, it's a very hard question. And uh, I would be happy if I know answer to that because uh, the best way to go, it would be if I already knew a lot of uh, funds in person through the years and, and see how they're acting. But uh, Today, there are so many different funds that appear like a couple of years ago. And even I for blockchain, I appeared like a couple of years ago. So uh, you can think about me like I was a man from nowhere. <laughs> I mean, mm. I have been in web development since 2008 uh, because I, I have a master's degree in computer science. But like in, in terms of the whole world cryptocurrency mark, uh, space, I, I, I'm also nowhere. I'm, yeah. I'm, nobody, I'm nowhere. I understand yeah. that. I mean, you're you're new to the space, but that doesn't mean that your it's startup. Very hard. Well, your startup is, is your startup is popular because it's a unique idea. You, the technology's there, the team's there. You bootstrap this. I mean, you tick a lot of boxes for all kinds of capital uh, support for all those that are really looking. And to be honest with you, some of them just invest in the brand name of Polkadot. Um, because yeah. Do you, know, do you know what? <laughs> I I remember a couple of times I asked. Uh, funds or potential uh, supporters so why are you interested in subsocial and i prepare for any kind of answer but um there was like yeah you know today investors are happy to invest in polkadot projects uh, <laughs> if they have a page from web foundation and you have two pages and oh gosh, if project, really yeah <laughs> yes wow. yes and, and listen and listen then 
And uh, if, if, you, if the project is part of Substate Builders program, it's even better. So you have two badges, you're in Substate Builders program, so why not? <laughs> Well, uh, hopefully that uh, that that entity got the the flick out of the potential investors because one of the things that I hope for you is that you make sure that you work them. You ask for more than just their money because they have to offer a whole lot of longitudinal support, um, and I'm sure you're going through that. And if you are new to this space, then make sure though, Alec, that you get people beside you to protect your you know, you know the integrity of what you've built because at the end of the day, you are long term and you want to have those backers that support that same ethos with proven and evidenced support they've done in the past. So in that sense, do you want to talk a little bit more about the, what you're planning? I know you don't like to talk about things that uh, aren't, cert uh, aren't certified, aren't signed off, but how much running money, money roughly are you planning on to raise in this, uh, these, these rounds? And what's the nature of it? Is there going to be seed and private rounds, public rounds? I mean, what, what are you thinking here? <laughs> I don't think that uh, this is the best uh, place to answer such kind of questions. Maybe we could do it later just, when it's planned. Yeah, I, 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 would, I would like to answer it in a little uh, generic way um, without explicit numbers. But sure. So I would like to explain my uh, vision and philosophy on this is that uh, if you want to deliver a great product, you could not raise uh, like a couple hundred thousand of dollars per for, for the next years, mm -hmm. because uh, if you want to hire uh, professionals, even from uh, more simple countries, not like from top right countries like US, Australia, and uh, I don't know, Sweden, uh, Switzerland, even from uh, other simpler countries, uh, you need to have a diverse team of uh, backend, frontend, UX, uh, marketer, uh, DevOps, uh, security. It's already several people, right? And then if you take some average salary, let's say like uh, even even 40,000 per year and multiply by, uh, let's say, 10 people. Mm -hmm. So it's already 400K per year not counting any expenses for marketing, for paid articles and in top uh, magazines, etc. So you can think roughly about like half a million at least per year, at least without any uh, mm. so, unexpected So long mutation. story short, you're going to need millions, you know, but the thing is though, Alex, Yeah, is but that at the same, at, at at the same, same time, time to... yeah, I was going to say, you're not going to raise hundreds of millions like we've seen in the past. No, no, no. So it's going to be a realistic amount that you actually need. That's really what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I want to, yeah, true. So like, remember there was such huge cases with like status same, they raised uh, two, uh, 200 million. Yes, Definity, like I think did a hundred yeah, and like, something, I can't remember. Ridiculous amounts, to be honest. Yeah, crazy, crazy amount. But uh, at the same time, I, I'm not sure, I, I, I didn't uh, look into their wallets and how they, did they convert into stable coins? So if some they didn't- did, Some didn't and some lost, yeah, but so regardless, for example, that was still real funds at the time. But still some some of them raised uh, at the all time high of Ethereum at uh, mm. 1,000, 1,200. And then all the things uh, divided by five, by 10, it's then it's maybe not so, big money like if you have a big ambitious plan you hired uh, people in top eight countries of the world and maybe like uh, 20 mil millions for several years it's like mm. more or less a uh, normal amount but 200 it's true. No, no. it's true and you know they have to eventually have a token to show for that or some sort of proof of value and some of them just didn't as you know some of them just collapsed and and decided not to go further and that's the concern you know, some, there was so much risk in just investing, you know, in the white papers and in the, the I guess, the, the promise of development. Whereas in your case, you actually have been building, you know, you bootstrapped from this beginning, you're not just starting now. And that's a big difference, Alec, that's right, that's you know, right. and so it's exciting because it would be a privilege, I would think, for any VC to partake in what you're doing because you are not at the start and you're in a position where you need funds, but you also can demand a lot more than just their funds. Yeah, 100%, because uh, you may notice if you followed Polkadot uh, one year ago before it was launched, uh, there were so small number of teams working on Polkadot. I mean, I mean, I, I knew maybe all of them, 
like uh, again uh, Akala, Plasm, Fala, Crust, uh, Darwinia mm. uh, and, and, and so on. But then <laughs> once Polkadot launched, like a couple months later, like projects popping up from everywhere, like Polka this, Polka that, Polka well, that's the thing. Polka, right? and, that's, and that's the thing we need to talk about because not everything, you know, is polka dot. There's polka dot and there's polka not. Some of them are just mm -hmm. using polka the name, right. you know. So <laughs> let's right. let's open that conversation up because I think we need to honour the parody team in doing this. I think we need to honour the substrate because there are very specific types of work very hard to honour that name as one of credibility and trust and and value. So, and you, all the ones you rattled off, they're all part of the test nets, they're part of substrates, they're part of the Sama, or they're part of parity. So I think it's important you raise this, absolutely, because we see influx right now, but not everything is endorsed by Polkadot. Yeah, I, I would like to add uh, to this that uh, I don't want to say that people and teams that uh, appear recently, they don't deserve, they are bad or something. They certainly will be uh, good at and, and 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 very good crazy best teams uh during the all time like uh, in ethereum like uh even several years after it was launched uh projects still appear like every every half a year or something like that right. and it will be the same in Polkadot. but i just want to, to bring attention and and uh, raise worry, worry worryness about so for me in some way it even reminds me all this ico boom of 2017 in in this way that there were so many projects and everyone uh, uh, like promised that we will create an um, alternative to LinkedIn. We will create an uh, alternative to YouTube and, and, and uh, we will just... just uh, Some will show <laughs> Yeah, just drop this and that. But uh, yeah. how many projects still work today? Like maybe, I don't know, I, I didn't count, but uh, it's for sure less than 10% of uh, source projects. And why it could not be the case today? I, I, I believe it is the case today. It is. And uh, I just want to wor uh, worry people that uh, mm. don't uh, trust. Well, like, well. like, like I, I remember words of thought. I mean, it's not exact quote, but he said something like, uh, check the code, something like that. Check the code of, uh, ch go to GitHub. Uh, if you don't, if you're not programmer, uh, try to find a friend or, mm acquaintance that uh, knows the program and, and, and check. Maybe so, some of these uh, smart guys, smart in quotes, uh, could just fork, copy the code. Yes. And maybe you can see, yeah, they have code, they have tons of code. But uh, how, how much new code they bring? And if you look at Substantial, we developed uh, like something around 15 or something different modules for Substrate for that are for social networking. That's a lot. <laughs> Uh, fork. This is not copy. This is not uh, just one model. It's it's more than ten already. And maybe mm -hmm. even if we throw away something, if we uh, make it deprecated, uh, there are still a lot of different models like yes. spaces, post, uh, moderation, uh, permissions, roles, like crazy. It's so much work already that you've done. And if we go back to Soda's point, you know, check the code, but also check the coder. That's where the team comes in and it's it's so essential. I did that very quickly with Sota. I was amazed actually with Plasm and I'm sure you would be too. It's such, such a, a novel and innovative team and, and, and code. Um, so in that sense, that can be done with you too and your team. Um, so I think a lot of people would have that confidence, especially those parties that want to longer long-term support you. You know, if they're willing to stake their, their funds in something like you for a very long period of time, and that's what I'm imagining you're going to be doing, expecting them to do that, then that aligns with your plan. You know, you don't want to be here for a one a, a one year pump and dump. You want to be here for the long term. You wouldn't be, yeah. you know, doing all this work for that reason. You wouldn't have put your own money into this if you, you know, were trying to simply run, do a cash grab. Now let's move back to the tech a bit because one thing we didn't talk about was data. And one of the things I want to understand better, you know, we talked a lot about Facebook, but what about Google in, the term, in terms of indexing? So I wanted to understand how the data for uh, the, the potential um, of all these different social networks would relate, um, because I wanted to try and understand, would there be some degree of decentralization with indexing data or will that be centralized initially? Um, so there is such term called Web 2.5. Have you heard about that? I'm going to today with you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I heard this term in 2019. 
I think it was October and it was a hackathon organized by by Outlier Ventures, I think. Okay. So they, I know yeah, Jamie, I so I'll have to ask him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So ask him. So uh, it's for sure it was at that conference I heard this term Web 2.0. Web 2.5. And why it's so interesting is that um, uh, by trying a lot of different ideas and promise, uh, trying to implement promises of uh, Web 3.0 in 2017, 18, and then to 2018, uh, people faced a lot of uh, issues, problems, barriers, etc. And then they started to think, okay, uh, why we cannot incorporate some uh, solutions from Web 2.0 that we are so familiar with? And why not to use a blockchain more like, um, uh, again, ledger? So we just record uh, who made what. And then uh, why not to use uh, the same uh, the graph, for example, or other indexing services solutions that are showing content from off-chain, but the, their input came from blockchain. So blockchain is like uh, this intermediary uh, to whom you send your data, your intention, your uh, authorship. And then on top of that, you just utilize uh, normal databases like uh, Postgres, MySQL, and all this uh, normal uh, so used and friendly technologies like Node.js and even like PHP or whatever, Python. So why not? And then you can check it again on uh, Ethereum if it doesn't match. And then if it doesn't match uh, the data that you expect, uh, maybe you can run your, yourself, your off-chain services, or you can use another service provider. So this is uh, what I really liked at that time. And we have something like similar, uh, but even, uh, even better in comparison to Ethereum because of substrate and so how it works. Uh, currently uh, people, when they post in uh, upvote and following space, everything goes through blockchain and IPFS. So first, uh, if you have content like this post and this post, we could have text and or image. Mm -hmm. So this image first is posted to IPFS node, and then IPFS node returns a unique CID, content ID, and then we get this content ID put into transactions that uh, records uh, post on blockchain with your authorship or records the follow. Uh, and, and, and then we have uh, anchoring, we're anchoring uh, who created what, when uh, on blockchain. And then we have backend services that are subscribed to events. Uh, we have a different set of events like post created, space created, post liked, uh, space followed, etc. And look, uh, of chain just uh, indexes this stuff in, in Postgres. And then when you go for your uh, new news feed, we get we get we load this news feed uh, from Postgres. But what is interesting, we load uh, IDs. And then we load the from IPFS and substrate. So the, we have quite interesting features that uh, not everybody, everyone knows about is that uh, subsocial could be run. Uh, I mean, web app could be run entirely in IPFS in, uh, as a static file, as a set of static files. Like uh, if you noticed this uh, Polkadot.js apps, if you used it, uh, they don't have actually backend. So their backend is substrate. So imagine uh, creating a social network that doesn't have backend except blockchain and IPFS. So you could uh, clone our web UI, create an alternative web UI, etc. Simplify it, uh, more complex, and just put an IPFS and you will have social network. Of course, it will be quite limited because it's hard uh, to build notifications because notifications will require some complex uh, SQL uh, requests and so on. Mm -hmm. But still, you will, you will have a list of spaces you follow. You will, have, uh, you will be able to see posts in space uh, and you will be able to see content of posts. So you will have this bare minimum that will allow you to use it normally. So it's crazy. It's like you cannot put Facebook in IPFS. Oh my God. Yeah, I, I see what you're saying. And you know, it's great that you have that technological suite on offer with all the different parts of Substrate. I mean, I can't imagine you doing this without having the Substrate and the parity backing. I think it would be very difficult to do. I think you're poised to really make a mark right now by having that done. And the thing is, that even with your roadmap, I wrote down some points that are looking for, looking good. Things like the free transactions you mentioned, but the mobile app, that's in there, um, uh, built-in monetization, that's going to be 
such a game changer as well as we know how important that is. People love money, people love making money, and people love being able to share in their own groups. But, um, and then the main la launch and the audits. So, so much is coming. I mean, I had a few other questions, obviously, I want to ask you, but we have talked for so long, and I'll hopefully we can catch up again and do another part two at some mm -hmm. stage. I'd love that. But what I do know is having this kind of conversation with you has been a little bit informal at times, but necessarily so, because you're real. You know, you're talking about things like the backing. You can't tell me all the details, but when it comes to that uh, strategic support and when it comes to those VCs potentially, I like hearing that you're really focused on the long term. I like that you're vetting. And we're joking sometimes about these people that came in and said, oh, I heard you were on Polka Dot, you must be good. I like that's sort of the joke because obviously we don't want those people, you know, supporting and not understanding the, the greater value that you offer, your unique value proposition. So I truly wish you all the very best and not just because you're on Polka Dot, but because you'll definitely leverage some of the best technology to build something that is potentially going to revolutionize social networks. It's going to give my own kids, hopefully, an opportunity to do things they couldn't do. Me as well. And even my, you know, people that are older than me, it's going to be really appropriate right now in this time and place to see solutions and, and alternatives to systems that really have been contentious. They've raised alarm bells. So I want you to keep building it. Honestly, Alec, I want you to really keep this going and never give up, mate, because we want to see this kind of technology flourish, connect with the blockchain, and most, most importantly, make a difference for users around the entire world. Thank you very, very much. I appreciate the um, feedback and this is encourages me to <laughs> uh, have more trust in what I'm doing because, you know, it's, it's not easy to do what we are doing because everyone uh, wants to see something swap, polka something, something swap, polka something, right. DeFi, DeFi. Yeah, exactly. but we, 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 yeah, we're going to have all this, uh, some of the DeFi features, but still I see it as a mix of social and finance. And I, I believe that uh, today, not so many people trust in this because m lots, lots, lots of people want to see something that's proven. Yeah. And how, how, how something that is revolutionary could be proven if it's revolutionary. Absolutely. Right? And, and I think you're so far. You're social and you're financed together. You are definitely DeFi, but you're also adding another layer of social into this. And the monetization is the FI. And I want you to DeFi, as in defy the status quo, defy the legacy models, and really bring this to the fore, mate, because it is tough. It's technologically challenging. Um, it's tough with the runway, but hopefully with the support you get right now from the right people, you won't be you know, finding this difficult for much longer because right now, Everyone is barracking for you. We know that Polkadot is, a, is the right kind of place for this kind of initiative. And all we can do is wait and see and be patient because it's going to take that bit of more time to get to mainnet. But I'm I promise you, mate, it's going to be worth it when it does because definitely there's a market there and definitely people want to engage at the very least and see how we can engage as uh, individuals partaking in networks that we can control or be involved with. That means we can decentralize social systems in a pluralistic, uh, like multi multifaceted sense. So it's not just about one one stop shop for you know a social network. It's breaking down those barriers and changing the game. So keep going, mate. Don't stop. And we'll catch up soon for part two to really dig deep in the parts that we missed today. Thank you very much. I, I believe that uh, next year's will be years of uh, decentralized social networking because you can already see something like this evolving very on, on a very high uh, speed on, in, in DeFi space and uh, like uh, Rarible and Zora and Mirror, et cetera. It's very, very cool. And we can bring this to the next level and, and we will. <laughs> Sure. Absolutely. And then everyone will be copycating like with DeFi. It will be crazy. <laughs> yes. And, and I think, honestly, the next couple of times we catch up, more will become uh, clear in terms of all the different facets of what you're pulling together. And also, thank you so much for having such a long interview when it is not your first language. And I mean that respectfully because I certainly couldn't do it in yours. And it is a tough technological discussion at different times. So for those who want to know more, don't forget, it's about subsocial networks. It's about technology that really affords these kinds of social changes. All the links will be below if you'd like to know more. And there will be a part two, hopefully three, four, and many more as we start to explore exactly what this can do for us as individuals that want to be part of something that is decentralized by design. So thanks again, Alec, for your time. And I wish you and all your team the very best until we catch up next time. Yeah, thank you, Brett, for a good conversation and interesting questions. Looking forward for the next interview. And bye.